Okay, so welcome to today's session. Um, as always, before we get started, we want to uh, pay attention to uh, the risk disclaimer. As we know, trading any financial instrument uh, carries with it a high degree of risk and you can lose more money than you deposit. Um, and most importantly, the views that I express here today are strictly mine and they are not representative of tick mill. Before we get going um, with the, the charts today, let me just um, briefly introduce myself. My name is Patrick Munley. I am a resident market expert at Ticknell. I've been involved in the financial markets for the past uh, 12 years. Um, I wasn't always involved in, in financial markets after I graduated from university. I joined a, a city consulting firm after a couple of years learning the ropes in uh, technology executive search. I left with a couple of colleagues. We did a startup that went through some pretty rapid growth. And after four or five years, I cashed in my stake in the business when we merged with another company. At that stage, I had a, a bunch of capital and time on my hands, and I started to explore my passion for markets. Uh, and re initially started day trading uh, the S&P 500 in a market that was pretty much trending north. And um, as is often the case, I had some initial beginner's luck, which um, saw me make some uh, solid and then some quite significant gains. And uh, as is often the case, uh, that beginner's luck ran out and, um, and it led to me not just giving back everything I'd made, it also led me to a six figure loss on my uh, initial capital. And to say that that was a gut wrenching and devastating experience is, uh, is an understatement of at the very least. Um, and at that stage, I decided, you know, I need to take a step back and, and think about what it is that I was going to do and could I make a sustainable income from um, trading the markets. And so uh, using my prior skills, I decided to uh, go about identifying uh, an individual who could ultimately act as my mentor. And after doing some networking, I was fortunate to be introduced to my mentor guy over in the US, worked with him over an 18 month to two year period, um, not just focusing on my technical game and upping my technical skills, but more importantly, my mental game. It was a period in which I became uh, far more self-aware and, um, and it, it, he really underpinned my, my mental performance and how to, to manage uh, the, the mental side of trading. And during that time I developed back-tested, rigorously back-tested, um, and forward-tested a, a core strategy that I've been trading since then. And, um, and I came back to the markets with a, a business plan, a trading plan, and the right mental approach to, uh, to the business. And since uh, 2008, when I came back into the markets, um, I've, on an annual basis, have, have been profitable. Um, I'm not concerned or, or emotionally invested in the outcome of individual trades. My focus is not on the next one, two, three, or even 10 trades. So that's on the next 100 trades, because I know in that sample size, my edge will demonstrate itself. And so uh, the data you can see on the screen is performance data back from 2013, because like I said, when I came back into markets 2008, over that five year period, I had some, some really, uh, some very strong years and um and it was a time when uh, friends and family saw what i was doing they wanted to get in on the action so i set up a managed account service which i've been running since uh 2013 and those are the figures that you can see um for that uh, for that service so that's my that's that's my main uh, occupation i have a couple of other projects like i said with tick mills at market resident producing um daily market outlooks and charts of the day setups i'm watching you can uh you can subscribe to that through the Tickno blog. Another, the other projects that I'm very passionate about and uh, very proud of is FX Career Swap, a leading online education firm. We develop retail trading ta talent, uh, take them through a process and a program. I teach my strategies, and then we uh, we provide those successful uh, in completing the process with a, a live funded account. Um, I'll post some links for uh, for FX Career Swap for those who are interested in. And looking at that at the end of today's session. So that gives you a flavor of who I am, uh, where I'm coming from, and uh, now let's think about where we are in terms of the markets. 
For those of you who are here the first, for the first time today, or just new to my, uh, my work, I, um, I'm uh, increasingly bearish the, the US dollar. And, um, and these are just a bunch of charts that highlights where I, where I think we're going in terms of the dollar. Uh, this is back in 2008, 2009, when, uh, when markets bottomed. Um, it was uh, obviously the, the back end of the, the great financial crisis. And when the markets bottomed, the dollar topped. And um, we also have some cyclic, cyclicality within, within respect to the dollar, which tends to move in 16 year cycles. And I think we have just completed a cycle top here. Another chart here that explains this in terms of how the dollar uh, cycles. And my view at the moment anyway, is that we've come into a meaningful, uh, a meaningful period where we could see a protracted um, dollar bearish cycle. Um, obviously the Corona uh, crisis, the trade wars are, uh, are underpinning um, concerns in the market and they're leading the Federal Reserve to flood the market with dollars. And that's, uh, that's inflating assets, stock market, the stock market specifically. Um, and at the same time then, that's leading to um, softness in terms of the dollar. Another key dynamic that's going to start to become increasingly um, focused upon is the idea of a uh, Trump losing the election and, and Biden getting in. And, um, and it's perceived that in an uh, election year, um, when, the, when the, the, the incumbent loses, that uh, from a historical perspective, uh, the dollar has tended to struggle. So this adds to this idea of, of dollar weakness. And specifically, when, you, when we get a Democratic president after a, a Republican one, um, that tends to be less supportive um, for the US dollar as, um, as, we, as for the reasons you can see here with respect to um, fiscal austerity measures, to, you know, higher taxes, less aggressive um, protectionist policies. Certainly Biden would, would not adopt the same stance as, as Trump um, with respect to, to China. And so this all uh, basically underpins this idea that we could be moving into a phase now where uh, the dollar is going to, to weaken. Now, obviously, nothing moves in a straight line, and, um, and we have seen a, a decent dollar decline at the moment. We're going to look into the charts in a minute, but I'm looking for a, a, a dollar correction in uh, over the, the July-August period, and then I'm looking for another sustained move lower in the dollar as we head into the election. I've got some information here from uh, Credit Agricole uh, talking about flows in terms of the euro. Obviously, the biggest counterpart to the dollar is the euro and um, and we can see that investors are starting to allocate capital into your into uh, the eurozone obviously we've got a bunch of dynamics at the ecb <coughs> coming up today um, and we've got uh this euro recovery funds which is the the great white hope at the moment and which has really been driving the uh the euro strength that we've seen um but again this could be a setup where it's buy the rumor and then sell the facts when um, we probably don't get the, the ideal deal or no deal is actually done at this weekend's meeting. And then it's kicked down the road to the back end of July. Um, so what, what, what I'm looking at here in terms of the flows, these are longer term capital flows. So, you know, this is an immediately impact um, trading decisions as such. But when I'm thinking about structurally how I'm going to be looking to be positioned over the second half of this year, then um, I'm looking, initially I'm gonna be looking for a, a Euro correction, but ultimately I see the Euro higher into the back end of the year. Um, got a chart here, this is from City with respect to their, the dollar view. And, um, and you can see they've got a bunch of annotation here, but they're, they're, they're looking for a move down into the, the 86 level. And, um, and we currently trade uh, just above 96. So, you know, there's quite a substantial move um, move lower and then obviously inversely we have the euro and upper, upper euro targets at this stage um, on the basis we're holding our current lows will be towards uh, 126 which is this 200 month moving average which you can see prices rotated around tested on several occasions so that would be the ultimate objective at this at this juncture um, looking for looking for euro strength one other factor to consider at the moment, and why we've seen, I think, 
uh, a bit of euro weakness creeping in is uh, we've got a huge amount of option expirations uh, going off um, about 20 billion this week at this in this 112 114 range so we tested just above 114 yesterday we've got a pullback we're ticking up a little bit again now but i'll be uh, i'll show you another couple of charts that are quite interesting here with respect to the euro this is the, how the euro trades around the ecb obviously we've got the press conference coming up uh, for the ecb in about uh, about 15 minutes here <clears throat> you can see that we often get some volatility around the press conference and then a pop higher but that tends to fade this is since lagarde took over this is an average uh, of the of, of how the market has responded to lagarde press conferences um, this is the euro in its entirety the average and again you can see that we tend to get a, a, a tradable top in the euro in and around you know this thursday friday period and then tend to trade lower into the into the following week and so if we jump into the charts now uh, we can have a look at what this means with respect to our uh, our trading opportunities uh, this is the one we want so this is the the dxy the, the dollar index and you can see we've got this ascending trend line support here we tested into it yesterday and, um, and we've got a bit of a pullback. We're probing it again uh, today. If we can hold this low on a closing basis, then um, what I'd be looking for would be a pop higher here in the dollar, uh, like I say, over the coming uh, four, six weeks. A bit of a grind higher, um, initially targeting a retest of this descending trend line resistance here at the 97.45. If we can get through there, the ideal objective would be a move up back into um, prior range support here let me just draw that in for you so move an ideal objective would be into this area which uh, certainly i'll be watching then for um bearish reversal patterns to uh to potentially set short positions there now obviously if we don't get this this bullish close today and we can't hold the trend line and we close below then i'll be looking um for a move certainly back into retest these prior lows 95.66 but ultimately then i'd be looking for a test of this support uh through the uh coronavirus lows there that we saw on the 9th of march that was back down into 94.67 and from there um then i'd be looking once again for a for a correction um and certainly then back testing this descending trend line resistance again will be the first objective um, but from there, obviously looking then at the potential for fresh short positions um, to target an ultimate break. I see uh, price breaking down uh, through these prior lows uh, and really getting down into these, this 90, 92 area in terms of the trend channel. But ultimately, if we think about that, uh, that city chart that I, I just shared, I'll just quickly go back to that. You can see the scope in terms of the bigger trend channel that we get down into this 86 area. So let's take a look at the euro now. So we've got the euro, it, it's broken out of its uh, trend line resistance here and, um, and we're trading just above those highs now. Like I say, I'd be watching <coughs> a retest or certainly a test here, so this 114.97. We've got the weekly R3 at 114. 95. So if we do get a pop here in terms of uh, through the press conference with the ECB, watching certainly tomorrow or later today to see if we get a reversal pattern um, because we've got some pretty nice uh, momentum divergence developing down here. And again, not, not that I'm, I'm talking about holding on to this position for a long time. This would simply be a trade, but I could, then we could see a corrective move uh, lower in the euro uh, into, into next week and um, probably some consolidation before building again i think to trade meaningfully through this 115 and ultimately looking uh, initially for this 117 118 area as the uh, as the next upside objective so looking for the potential for a uh, a reversal to develop in the uh, today later today or tomorrow friday um, and that would just be a, a short opportunity as, uh, as we probably get, like I said, this by the rumor, the market's been bid up into this um, Eurozone meeting this weekend, and then we'll probably uh, see some disappointments 
Now, I should caveat that because if we, don't get me wrong, if we, uh, if we do see this, uh, this fund come through and it's all agreed, uh, bells and whistles, and the, the, it's, it, the, the grant element of the fund is, is agreed to by the, the frugal four nations, then we could be trading meaningfully higher and I'd be looking for a, a straight move up to test uh, this ascending trend line, uh, projected trend line resistance up to 1755. That is, it's possible. Uh, it's not as, as probable, I don't think, um, as to us being disappointed with, uh, with what happens this weekend. And certainly we can see an equality move versus the last correction, which would put us back down into this 112, 112 30, 112 area, uh, where we could reassess then looking at long positions. A uh, couple of trades that I'm looking at here. This is the uh, dollar Swiss. We've got Nice big outside day bullish reversal pattern from this retest of the support here at the 93.77. And if we go to the hourly charts, I'm watching for a potential pullback here into the daily pivots and uh, this prior range resistance. So this would be the accumulation period. Uh, then we've got the pop higher. The first pullback here into this 94.26 could offer an, in an intraday opportunity to get in um, with a nice tight risk reward setup there. Certainly <coughs> watching for bullish reversal patterns in this 94.25, and we can then look to, uh, to target higher up into these 95.40 area. So that's an intraday setup for those who are on the intraday charts. I do most of my trading off the daily time frame. Um, another one that I've got, uh, that I'm watching here, we've got this uh, the dollar CAD breakthrough, the ascending trend line support, We're consolidating a little bit here. This is a great setup because um, stocks will be building below these lows. So I've got an order, a, a position that I'm going to be running uh, through 135 to, uh, to initially target a retest of 133 here in the Canadian dollar. Got similar setup in the Euro CAD. Obviously with this uh, ECB, we we're a little bit more bullish. We didn't get the reversal. What I'm looking for in terms of entries with my trading is, uh, is obviously I have this um, proprietary indicators is volume weighted average price. And for me to get in on the short side or to look at short positions, the candle uh, needs to close uh, red versus the VWAP. That means the candle has to close below the VWAP before I could be, before I'd be looking at uh, doing anything on the short side. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We've got the Aussie CAD. See, we didn't get the close yesterday below the VWAP. We've got some nice momentum divergence into these new highs. And, um, and let's see if we can get a, a close today, just below the, um, the daily pivot there at 94.30 area would, uh, would offer again, great risk reward because you can look at stops just above the high of this inside candle. Um, so I'll be watching that into the close tonight, see if we close red and ideally just close sitting somewhere around that 94.40 area. Um, what else have we got here? We've also got the Kiwi CAD. This is the chart I shared through the blog a while ago. Um, we've got the red closes here, um, but the, the challenge with these, these trades is this is what, what I've got running here is a, is a, uh, a monthly VWAP. So this tells me what the volume weighted average price trend is on a monthly time frame, and uh, I prefer to be trading with the higher time frame trend. Obviously this is a daily chart. Uh, so I didn't take that, but one trade I'm running at the moment is the CAD yen. We've got, um, if we go to the, let's just see here. So th this is the dollar CAD, just quickly before I go into that CAD yen. And this is what I mean about trying to trade um, with the higher time frame trends. This is the daily chart, this is the weekly chart, and this is the monthly chart. And you can see candles are red <coughs> um, on both of these charts. That tells me the weekly and the monthly trend is to the downside. And then yesterday we got that break of the trend line. And so that's why I'm tracking this to, to try and take advantage of the momentum that's developing on the higher time frames. Now let's just change these to the CAD yen so we can see uh, the similar setup that I've got there. So that's the daily chart. And let's see where we are on the monthly. So we've got a monthly that's bullish and a weekly that also is, uh, is looking like it's gonna close bullish. So again, this, tra this trade, not only does it have the uh, candlestick pattern set up that I like to these outside bullish reversals uh, or bearish reversals, but also I can take advantage here of the um, positive momentum coming from both the uh, 
weekly and the monthly charts as well. So that's, uh, this is a filter I use for, for identifying more high probability setups. Um, let's see where we are with the S&P 500. So we're testing, I posted this chart on the blog a while ago. So we're testing, we, we got a neg negative close yesterday, but we didn't close below the VWAP. So this candle is green on your charts, on a normal chart, if you look at it, um, the candle will probably be red, I think. Um, but what I'm looking for is a red close here. This is an equality objective versus the price swing high. So this leg is equal to this leg, not necessarily in time, but it is in terms of price. If we get a close above here, so if we close above the 3230, then the next upside objective is the 161 extension of this structure. So that means that uh, this move is 1.618 times this move. And that would actually put us back into all time highs. So if we get a close above the 3230 area, then the, the next objective becomes uh, the 3370. Now, if we get that close, then that has implications um, to my mind for the dollar, which we would probably see um, trading lower. This is, uh, we're currently in this triangle here. This is uh, the Dow Jones dollar index, we're equally weighted against the, uh, the Euro, Sterling, the yen and the Australian dollar. The other, the DXY is the, the broader basket dollar index, um, which is weighted against six other currencies. The euro makes up the majority of that weighting. So these are two dollar indexes. Um, and I look for confirmations in terms of patterns. If I'm thinking about trading these dollar pairs, I want to see confirmations be between both of these dollar indexes, really. So you can see we're testing major support here in the Dow Jones dollar index and um, looking for a close a red close, uh, sorry, a green close to, uh, to confirm short positions potentially then in the, uh, the Aussie, uh, sorry, the Euro, which is equally weighted, like I say, uh, the Sterling, let's take a look at where we are there. So you can see I posted this chart as well. Um, we've been testing this uh, 126 area. We've been kicked back from there a few times now. If we get a red close here today, then we could see, uh, we could see a, a sterling rollover, certainly to test range support down to this 122.60 would be the next downside objective. Um, and then the Aussie is the other component of this Dow, so this Dow Jones dollar index, where's the Aussie gone? There it is. So we're up here testing what I think um, will prove to be uh, some range resistance here. This is the uh, move prior to the uh, the COVID collapse, so to speak. And, um, and what I'm anticipating is, again, into this July and August period, when the markets tend to be uh, in, in, ranging, in ranging mode, um, I'd be looking for a potential pullback, certainly back into this 68.20, but even as deep as the 67 area, before once again looking to get bullish the Aussie um, on a, uh, as we head into the, uh, the autumn. But again, no, nothing to do until I get that red candle close and then, uh, then we can assess risk reward setups, etc. See what else I've got on the radar for tonight. Uh, we had the Sterling CAD. So the Sterling CAD was a potential setup from yesterday. We took out the um, channel here, the descending trend channel, monthly VWAP. Um, was bear is bearish. The issue with this one was that the weekly one is um, is bullish. So um, preferred the CAD yen as a setup that had should potentially have more momentum with it. But again, once once even once we've broken down here, what we have the option to do then is to go into the intraday chart. So let's look at it on the hourly and see where we are. Drawings. Uh, so um, first, first what I'd be looking for here is have we completed an equality move? And you can see we have. So this move could actually, although it looks very bearish on the, uh, the daily time frame, um, on the intraday time frame, we've actually just completed what would be a standard corrective pattern. And we, you can see we're getting a strong reversal from here. So what I'd be watching for now is can we get back up into this area, this 170.80, where we've got the, uh, the daily VWAP, which is represented by this, this red line on this chart. So if we can get back up into this area, we get bearish reversal patterns, then I can see if it's, uh, it's an opportunity to get in on that bigger daily time frame. But certainly, I uh, don't want to be selling into this zone here because this could be the, 
area where the buyers are stepping back in as we just completed uh, a standard equidistant swing correction which uh, which looks something like that these corrections not don't always necessarily um, map in terms of time and price but uh, certainly where you get the price reaction like this uh, there's a potential that this was just a corrective move um, versus uh, versus the trend um, let's just quickly look at copper and go back to the daily time frame so copper obviously a uh, big driver in terms of the commodity uh, currencies and you can see we've been on a tear here in copper but uh, this candle on a normal chart i'll just show this to you uh, for demonstration purposes so if i take off the five period vwap you can see that candle was actually red but the reason why i use the five period vwap is to help me stay out of trending conditions and getting caught out so um, once we get that close if we get a, a an inverse pin bar almost here um, uh, but as long as we close red we could see uh, we could see some more selling in copper and that obviously then has implications for the Aussie the Kiwi and the CAD so um, just I guess to sum up briefly here what I'm looking for potentially now as we, we head into uh, the ECB press conference this afternoon starting in a minute um, I'm looking for a potential pop higher in the euro and then I want to watch where we close tonight, see if we can get a bearish reversal candle that closes below uh, the near-term VWAP. So a close below 13, let's say 113.75 uh, would be an opportunity to do something short-term uh, on the short side in the Euro, uh, looking for disappointment really out of this, uh, this meeting this weekend in terms of the recovery fund. Um, I've got positions in the CAD yen, I've got an order in for the, uh, the Looney. See if we get a breakthrough that 135. And I'm watching the Aussie CAD, the Kiwi CAD, watching Copper close tonight. Um, and then see, most importantly, if the, uh, the dollar here can hold this support and break to the upside to confirm the potential for a correction. So those are the charts, those are the, the flows and the, the, the action that I'm watching. What I can do now um, is open this up for, uh, for questions. If anyone uh, has a... Okay, let's see, we've got some questions here. Uh, may you uh, reiterate okay the kiwi cad let's look back at that one first i'll just take a quick sip of water here before we do so so the kiwi cad is obviously is in this ascending trend channel um and we've we've basically just completed we, we exceeded it slightly an equidistant swing move here so you can see this leg versus that correction into that high, we've got that red reversal candle, continuing to reverse lower here. Um, the reason why I wasn't in this, it didn't take this as a, a short position, is that we're trading against both the monthly and the weekly um, VWAPs, which are both bullish. I'll, uh, let me go back to that multi-chart and I'll just show you. So if we change that to the Kiwi card, and we go Kiwi card. So you can see here, we're, we're bullish on both the monthly and the weekly time frame. Now, if we, if we get a close here that we, let, we close below 88.10, that would flip the weekly, um, tr tr uh, weekly trend bearish. And so then what you'd be looking for ultimately would be a break of this channel. And then any move uh, back in to retest the channel as resistance with a, with a reversal pattern, would be an opportunity on, on the short side to play with the weekly trends. But like I say, what I prefer to do is, as, as much as possible is be trading with these higher time frame trends as they provide uh, the, you know, more momentum orientated trading opportunities. Um, the Swissy, let's go back to that. <coughs> so the Swissy has tested this support here, 9370. We've held it a bunch of times. We had a big outside reversal candle yesterday. And what I was saying um, for, for those who are, are looking at the intraday timeframes, if we go to the hourly, what I'd look for here is a pullback now uh, to test the 94.20 area. 
And then I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns, i.e. a candle that closes green above the near-term VWAP, where you could set long positions, with a tighter risk reward, and then always what I'm looking for initially in terms of the, uh, the profit objectives is the equality move. So if we, if we hold these highs, we pull back into here, you can see that the, the initial objective for me, depending from where we bottom, would be the equality move and then the 161 extension. Does that, uh, does that help uh, anonymous attendee? <laughs> Um, what about gold? How are we going to 1900? Um, no, I don't. I uh, I don't think we're going to be going there in in a, uh, a straight line as such. Let's pull up the daily chart. It's a pretty crowded position here, gold, and um, and we're trading at the 161 extension of this prior move. We're hugging this trend channel. To be honest with you. A close back through um, through these lows here, 1791, and I think we uh, we could have a, a decent correction or a shakeout. When you get these trades that are, you know, the, the darling of the market, so to speak, they're very crowded, um, and we're not quite seeing. We're starting to lose momentum here. You can see that the momentum studies down here are diverging, and we're struggling to make and sustain new ground. So I'm actually, I'd be in, in intermediate term. Uh, short term bearish, what I'd be looking for then would be an equality move. So, I mean, I could easily see us trading back down to 1725 before then looking to build uh, the potential for a, another leg higher. But I don't uh, at this stage see, uh, see us breaking meaningfully higher. Um, so, I, I think, I, I mean, in the long run, yeah, I, I, you know, I, there, there's certainly a case for, for gold higher with these, uh, with these central banks just uh, pedal to the metal, so to speak, with respect to uh, liquidity measures. So I do see the case for gold going higher in the long term. But at this juncture, here and now, the next trade for me in terms of gold would actually be on the short side before, reload, before you could look to reload on the long side from better, better levels is my, uh, is my take on it, Arnold. Um, Hoisin asks uh, Euro. Yep. So, like I said, the Euro for me, um, I'm looking for a, a, a bearish reversal today or tomorrow. Um, and I think what I what I anticipate we're going to see is a, a corrective move um, into uh, July and uh, sorry into the back end of July and August. Um, if we go back to the presentation. Look here, these are seasonal performances, and <clears throat> you can see that August has a tendency to be relatively weak uh, for the FX majors, and, um, and the doll tends to fare okay. So, again, during July and August, where you've got thinner markets, you haven't got as many, uh, many traders at their desks, you can expect markets to range, and so that's why you know I can see us, you know. We, depending upon the outcome of this, 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 this weekend. But certainly the, if we think about historical, uh, historically similar uh, events with the Eurozone, it tends to be a bit of a, a disappointment. D don't get me wrong. I mean, they're, they're, they're certainly going to have this fund, um, but it, I just don't see it all being smooth sailing. It's, it's probable or possible certainly that the candidates kick down the road and they're going to have another meeting at the end of, end of July. Um, and that would allow for some consolidation in the euro. So at this juncture, the next trade um, for me would be, uh, I'd be looking on the short side, but, am I, but after we get through the summer, I get, uh, I'll be very bullish, uh, the euro, sterling, uh, et cetera, as I, you know, I, as I have a very, uh, or, or I, I perceive that there are a lot of downside risks to the dollar heading into September, October and the, the election in November. Let's see, do I have any other questions? Um, did you get that, Hoisin? Okay, does anyone else have a chart they want me to take a look at? You can type into the chat or into the Q&A box and I'll, uh, I'll take a look. Any, uh, any charts that I haven't covered this week, um, I tend to just, uh, what, I, what, I'm, what I like to do in these sessions 
is give you a, you know, an overview of the market dynamics, flows, et cetera, and then just look at the specific setups really that I'm, uh, that I'm tracking at the moment and trades I'm in and, uh, and we'll update you accordingly. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'd like to thank everybody for their time. I hope this has, uh, this has been useful for you. Like I say, we're gonna be doing these every Thursday, same time, and I'll update you each week on the trades that I've identified in the prior week. Uh, let you see uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, like I say, focus on process, process over outcome, just playing the probabilities. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, and, uh, and have a good week.